when you write your own scripts, you can end up with a lot of terminal output. So how do we make this a little bit easier to scan and understand what's going on? We're going to look at four design principles that will help you clean up your output and make things a lot easier for you to get straight to the point of exactly what you're looking for. Since the terminal, at least at first, is a little bit limited in what we can do, it's not like a word processor where we can add font sizes and change the font and all this kind of stuff. We can do a lot with a typography to make things easier to understand and to get things done faster. So let's dive right in. Let's say we're doing some QA or site monitoring of some sort. This is the script that we've got. It obviously is just for demonstration, but as you can see, <laughs> it's putting out a lot of output. We're checking 50 different URLs to see if they will come back with a good status or not. One of the first things that will be the easiest to start implementing is adding in white spaces. Now, white spaces could take the form of actual spaces in between words, obviously, but tabbing is also an option as well as adding lines and, sp and line breaks in between groups of information. White space is going to be your new best friend, if it's not already. We want to add white space in a way that groups like objects together. As humans, it's in our nature to assume either belonging or a relationship of some sort based on the space around objects. If there's too much space, there's hardly any, any closeness, the objects are seemingly unrelated. The closer they are, they appear to be more related to each other than to other objects that are out there. So knowing this, we can now start adding in a little bit of white space to help our output so that we can understand it just a little bit better. For example, if I scrolled into the middle, how do I know that all of this, where does this belong? Does it belong to this URL or to this one? I don't know. It could be either, depending on how the programmer decided to structure everything. So now we can see that every single group is clearly de defined as a group simply because of the space between each group. That makes it really nice for us to be able to scan through. We know that all of this belongs to this URL. The character that you want to make part of your scripts is going to be this backslash n. This is an escape sequence for new line. You'll be uh, recognizing this in regular expressions, and it is very common to be used throughout any type of programming, any coding language. So that's a really useful character to keep in your arsenal so that you can group things visually by adding just a little bit of space. One of the other ways that we can help add some spacing to help is actually using tabs. So for example, maybe if these were all underneath this checking this specific URL, we could tab these in to make it just a little bit more clear that again, they belong to this specific URL section. And that's one way to clean it up. Another way, since right now we have what's called a rag right where it's ending in a uneven way. We could fix this either by adding the OK status to the beginning and then tabbing over to put images or whatever the label is on the right side. Or we could, again, just make this basically into a table and push these OKs out so that they all line up evenly vertically. So this is what that would look like if we're using the tab character or backslash T to insert tabbed spaces. This makes it a little bit easier for us to read simply because our eyes know exactly where to go to scan things. We have this wonderful straight line right here for our eyes to always know where to go. And then we can also, again, do the same thing by scanning through the status code or whatever it is. And that makes for a very, very quick scannable experience. Let's tackle our second design principle, which is hierarchy. Sometimes we end up with more than just one grouping that we want to be able to call out in the terminal. For example, maybe we have a couple of sets of output with groups inside of that output. So a larger section that is doing something and inside that section we have smaller groups of information. So what do we do then? Now you can always use white space. The greater the white space, the more separate from uh, another group an object or a group of objects becomes. When we scroll, we can tell that this terminal can easily eat up all of our vertical space. And that makes it really hard for us to remember as we're scrolling 
did we forget or miss that that larger gap? Which one am I on? So a better way to help with creating sections of content or sections of output is by using hierarchy. Now, usually as a designer, we would use something like size, the font size to create that larger heading style. For example, if you're writing an article, you've got the title that's really large. Then we've got a couple of headings that break up the content that way. And we could even have subheadings that are even smaller. And that helps us to recognize what's the most important, or at least what is the most broad part of the content and what gets more focused, right? Now, to my knowledge, we can't actually change the font size, at least for each line individually uh, in the terminal. So we're going to have to use something a little bit more creative to get that same effect of creating a larger hierarchy. Now, of course, you can always get some ASCII art in your code. However, it is a lot of work and it may be more work than is useful to you, especially if you're trying to automate something at work, for example. Another way to do this a lot faster is simply by using characters and drawing boxes in a sense to create the illusion of something with a larger font size or something that it feels bigger. For example, up here, maybe this is the beginning of our script so that we can clearly see it's taking up a lot of vertical space and uh, horizontal space. So it gets called out when we're scanning through, when we're going through our our, our output, it's a lot easier to pick out, hey, right here, there's that start of the script that I've been looking for. And there are other ways that you could create a hierarchy of your heading levels. For example, you can use different colors and we'll go over that in just a minute, but this is an example of making it really clear and calling something out with just text. Yes, I didn't change the heading size, but this feels heavier to me than this line does down here. And by stringing together larger font symbols together, it's another great way to kind of call out that this is a, a, a title of some sort. It's a marker. You can create underlines like this, maybe just have an entire row of just these hash marks. And that makes it really, really nice to be able to separate sections that way. One last tool for us VS Code users, we can use the set mark escape sequence that they've recently launched and have added support for as a marker, which will be added to the left margin of the output as well as in the scroll bar. So as you can see on the bottom right of my screen, the scroll bar now has these two highlighted boxes because we've run two different sets of this program. I wanted to be able to know when the first one was and when the second one was. So that makes it really easy for me to then scroll straight to this heading, which is the second round. And as you can see, there's this little dot that has appeared. And then of course we can scroll up to the next one, which is right here. And that makes it really nice, especially if you really do have to have a lot of vertical scrolling to understand where things are in relation to where you are as well as just having that nice, again, visual marker that can be put on any line. If you want to know how to actually add these markers in, go ahead and check out the shorts video in the card. Our third design principle is using the appropriate casing. Now, what does that mean? Lowercase, uppercase, they have actually different functions for us as we're scanning and as we're trying to read. The cool thing about choosing the correct case for the correct situation is that it can actually help you create, again, some visual hierarchy, draw interest, or make things more readable. For example, lowercase is always a lot easier to read quickly than uppercase. If you want to know the specifics on why that happens, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I'll do a video on that. But I do want to call out that right here is a good opportunity for something that is uppercase. Now, as you can see, this has given us an error 404. It's not super clear or obvious other than the fact that it breaks our visual pattern. One way that we could do this is by making this feel more important, feel like it's dense and shouting at us, right? And that's when uppercase is a great option. So when I run this again, we can now see, hey, look, this calls out to me just a little bit more. To further demonstrate this, take a look at these two different sentences. They both say the same thing, but one definitely feels denser. It's kind of drawing my eye down here. And that's because 
all caps create a line. It's almost as if we are literally drawing a block of color because all of the letters hit the same height at the top and at the bottom. Whereas up here, we do have a little bit of this white space in between the top of the S and the top of the line height. So it adds a little bit of visual weight and that's a great way to create lines in a sense. So this is, it feels more like a straight line for us and even though it may seem insignificant in this example, this casing, which is sentence casing using a mix of upper and lower case is actually a lot easier to read, especially when there's a lot of dense text. So if you're doing something that is maybe a headline, this is a great way to do it because it's very dense. It slows people down so that they read the, the actual headline. But if you're going to type out or output large paragraphs, you'll want to make sure that you're using lower case or sentence case so that it's easier for people to read. Okay, so, so far we have used very basic things that can be used in the terminal, pretty much regardless of which type of shell you're using. So now we can get into maybe one of the more fun parts of making things a little bit easier to read, and that is with color. Designers use color all the time to help direct our eyes to understand something that's important, something to be called out, and we can actually utilize some escape characters or escape sequences. Now, as a warning, this isn't gonna work for every terminal possible, but it does work on most of the most popular shells and, and terminals. So you are pretty safe. You'll wanna experiment with this and, and see if it makes sense for the situation that you have. Uh, whether that's in a professional context or especially if it's personal and you've got your, your shell, your Z shell, it should be just great. Taking a look at this warning here, there's a lot we could do. We could add in a little bit of color to kind of just key us into a warning and also using color to separate different types of warnings. For example, maybe this warning isn't quite as bad as having a 404 page. So maybe we want our error to clearly stand out as a type of warning, but that's a really bad warning. And maybe this one is a different type of, of warning, and therefore we wanna have a different color that will help us to recognize the difference between types. But let's go ahead and color up our warnings so that we can make two different types of warnings here. I am, of course, using a Visual Studio Code snippet that I've created to remember these codes for. If you wanna know about those, you can click on the shorts video in the card as well. All right, let's run this one more time and see what it looks like. This is very nice for me to call out, hey, look, we've got a warning, we've got an error. Of course, pretty standard to make an error red and a warning yellow. But one thing I would caution you against is overuse of color. Now, it is really fun, of course, to change the color, especially in the terminal. I don't know why, it just feels really fun. But the more color that you use, the more muddy your text will, will become. And so we actually don't want to overuse our colors. That's why I didn't highlight the entire line here as red. You definitely can, but I feel like that's too dense and it's, it makes it hard to read. And if I were to quote a certain movie, if everybody is super, then nobody is. And therefore, if everything is colored, nothing is. We should be using tricks like color to call out what's really important and let the rest of the stuff, I don't need to make any of these things a different color because they're so common. If they're all okay, then I don't need to know that, right? I only want to know about where are things breaking, and that's why I've chosen to only color the errors and the warnings. All right, we've covered a lot of theory in this video, so if you want to get some of the techniques down, I've linked some blog posts down below here on the Not Defined Tech blog so that you can actually go through the, the techniques and get those mastered as well. And if you are still trying to feel comfortable in the terminal, uh, go ahead and check out this video right here. It'll be a, your quick reference guide to navigating the terminal, hopefully make it a little bit more natural for you.